Hi, I'm Ian Anderson. I'm an Apple certified trainer. I teach Adobe and Apple apps. Last night I posted a tweet that went viral. Notifications are still dinging and because a tweet is never long enough to tell the full story, I thought I'd explain a bit about what happened. I'll try to keep it short though. Now, Pantone colors are not just swatches in your software. They're swatches that match up with printed color samples and also ink recipes so that you can communicate with a printer and be sure that you're going to get the exact color that you asked for. Now, these colors can go beyond the standard color gamut of CMYK, in which colors are made up from the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or key, used in the standard four color CMYK process. Now, a spot color is usually an optional extra ink printed after and on top of the CMYK inks, and it's made up according to a recipe, usually one provided by Pantone to your printer. Now, these Pantone colors are widely used in packaging, anywhere you need an exact color match, and also used for neons and metallic inks. Now, sometimes people also choose to save money on printing by skipping the C, M, and Y and using one or two spot colors with black for a two or three color print job. So what's the problem between Adobe and Pantone? They haven't been able to come to an agreement on how Adobe should distribute Pantone swatches, and Adobe are removing most of them from their design apps, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Now let's roll back to find out what kind of problems this will cause and is already causing. So I used to work as a retoucher and designer in London um, about 20 years ago. And as part of a Photoshop class I was teaching recently, I opened up one of my 20 year old images that I worked on for a famous UK underwear brand to see this error. You can see that it's replaced a spot color with black. Now this particular file uses Pantone 130 CVC, an older Pantone color, and this is an ink used in the packaging, both in the Photoshop image and surrounding it in the design layout. Now to be fair, most people won't work like this very often, but it's not an uncommon workflow in packaging. Now the current release of Photoshop doesn't have this color in its included color books and turns it black. So to be clear, if this image was printed, the printer could take the named channels and just swap in the right ink, but I can't tell what it looks like on screen without manually choosing a color to replace this spot color that's now missing. Now, if you have an older version of Photoshop made before August 2022, like the first release of Photoshop 2022, you can still open up this file without any problems. This is a recent change. But with Creative Cloud, you can only download the current release and one version older. So when Photoshop 2024 is probably released in a year, you won't be able to download Photoshop 2022. You'll be able to get any of the Photoshop 2023s though. Now, Illustrator and InDesign have slightly different issues. While they won't be removing spot colors that are already in your files, after November this year, and not early November as I said in my tweet, sorry, just sometime after, November, uh, you won't have access to all the color libraries you have access to now unless you pay Pantone for a license. So if you don't have those matching color books, you won't be able to map a Pantone number to an LAB color reference, which is what you need to convert it to RGB so you can represent on screen or to CMYK if you want to print that color out using the four color process. Now you could still specify a Pantone color that a client has requested for use as a spot color which remember costs more to print, though you'd have to define its matching screen color yourself. Now a Pantone license is currently priced at $15 a month in the US with a yearly discount, or 21 Australian dollars here in Australia. And I do need to clarify an error in my original tweet where I said it was 21 US dollars. Now the Pantone site doesn't say that it's giving me a different price based on my location here in Australia or that they're quoting a price in Australian dollars. It's just a dollar sign. I read this page on the US site as talking in US dollars and thought it was $21 US. So sorry for the confusion, but I did try to get this right. Either way, it's too much money for a lot of people. And several replies to my original tweet have said that the Pantone software is not very good even if you do pay for it. So if you don't want to pay, you could back up the color books from any of the 2022 Adobe apps and then load them into the new versions of the Adobe apps. 
Now, if this workaround is blocked, perhaps by newer Adobe apps checking for Pantone in a color name, you could probably open up these files with a text editor like BB Edit, which even in its free mode can find one bit of text, one name, change it for another. Though, of course, I'm not encouraging you to do this and I'm not a lawyer. Other people in the replies to my original tweet may have found other solutions too. So how did it come to this? I'm really not sure as the whole story isn't public. There have been statements in the press that Pantone are apparently unhappy with Adobe because they haven't been including the latest versions of Pantone swatches in their products for many years, which does seem to be the case. If you look at the competing Affinity suite of products, that's Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, which you can buy outright with no subscription, they have several Pantone color books, including the latest version of Solid Coated, which is called Pantone Formula Guide Solid Coated V4. The colors in there still have a C on the end and still have everyone's favorite red 485C. So why didn't Adobe just update the color books like Pantone wanted? And why couldn't they come to an agreement instead of asking designers to pay Pantone directly? No idea, but maybe it'll come out eventually. For now, this issue won't affect everyone immediately, but unless something changes, it will be a problem for many designers. I suspect most of them will find old color books online or just avoid using Pantone colors altogether, which is a shame as it'll make things less accurate. Printers will probably have to pay up, but they are already paying Pantone for the color recipes anyway. Now that's it for this video, but if you want to learn more about design or design apps, then you can take my courses on Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Photo, and Apple's Final Cut Pro in Motion at macprovideo.com if you like, or you can read my book, Final Cut Pro Efficient Editing, available wherever you buy your books. Thanks so much for watching, see you later.